So now let's look for some organic functional groups in biomolecules. Carbohydrates are usually defined as polyhydroxyl aldehydes or ketones. So polyhydroxyl means many alcohols, and aldehyde or ketone means just those groups that you're used to looking for. These are all three various ways of drawing carbohydrates. These are all monosaccharides, single carbohydrates. Let's look for the functional group. We have an aldehyde in that one, and then we have a whole host of alcohols. Polyhydroxyl aldehyde, that's a carbohydrate. Let's check this one out. Here we have C double bond O, C, C. That's a ketone. Then we have a whole host of alcohols. Polyhydroxyl ketone. That's a carbohydrate. Let's check this one out. This is a way, an abbreviated way, of showing an aldehyde. They carefully write CHO as opposed to COH to say that the aldehyde looks like this and the other is an alcohol. So this has an aldehyde and a whole bunch of alcohols. We have many alcohols. We have another carbohydrate, many alcohol, aldehyde, or ketone. This one happens to be glucose. This is one way of drawing fructose, which is the same as glucose except it's got a ketone instead of an aldehyde. They're isomers of each other. They have exactly the same composition. This is galactose, one of the sugars in the disaccharide lactose. So what about amino acids? Amino acids have two functional groups, carboxylic acid and amine, or amino groups. The three amino acids shown on this slide are all what are called alpha amino acids. These are the kind that actually bond together to make peptides and proteins. And so we have carboxylic acids. Can you find them? Each one of these amino acids has at least one carboxylic acid. Here, here, and here are the standard carboxylic acids. This particular amino acid just happens to have a side group that also includes a carboxylic acid. So it would be called an acidic amino acid because it has this extra acid group. Notice that this side group doesn't have an acid group, and this side group doesn't. This is a hydrocarbon side group and a hydrocarbon side group. So we have carboxylic acids in each of these amino acids. So where's the amino group? An amino group is a way of saying an amine. An N connected to three things, at least one of which is a carbon. Can you find them? There they are, N, C, and two H's, amino, amino, amino. These are also all drawn the conventional way for an amino acid with what they call the N terminal to the left and the C terminal to the right and the side group pointing down or sometimes pointing up, but usually pointing down. Amino acids, carboxylic acid and amino groups. Well, what's a peptide? It's simply made out of amino acids that have joined together. When they join together, they do a condensation reaction and form an amide, much like the reaction when you made the polymer nylon in the laboratory. So there's always going to be an amide group joining the amino acids together. We end up with remaining carboxylic acid group and then remaining amino group. So first let's find the amide groups. Remember what you're looking for? C double bond O, and then that same C is single bonded to a nitrogen. There we go, C double bond O, N. This right here is the brand new bond that formed and connected the two amino acids. C double bond O, N connected the two amino acids. So we should also still have a residual amino group and a residual carboxylic acid group. So let's go looking for those. There's our residual amino group on the left-hand side because these are written in conventional form. So we should have a residual carboxylic acid if these are peptides. Well, there's the residual carboxylic acid in that one, but this one's different. That's not a carboxylic acid on the C-terminal end. So what is that? Well, let's look at it. C double bond O, single bond O, and then instead of an H, it has more carbons. That's a functional group on the list that you should know. That's an ester. So this particular one is like a peptide. It's two amino acid residues that have joined together with an amide bond, but instead of leaving a carboxylic acid group on the end, it formed an ester. So we have what's called the methyl ester, just because that's a methyl group, of a carboxylic acid. This particular little molecule here on the right is called the methyl ester of a dipeptide, and it happens to be the structure for the artificial sweetener aspartame or NutraSweet. If you take off this methyl group, it's not sweet at all. If you break apart this amide bond, it's not sweet at all. This compound is fairly easy to damage with heat because this bond is very subject to hydrolysis with heat 
And so if storing something that's sweetened with NutraSweet in the heat of the day, you can end up with this bond hydrolyzing and you don't have a sweet taste anymore. Also, that's one reason NutraSweet or aspartame are not used in cooked foods. Here's another peptide. This is a pentapeptide. In other words, five amino acids have linked together. This particular one is called Lou encephalin. These compounds, the encephalins, are the natural endorphins, the molecules that are naturally made and seem to fit into the opiate receptors in our brains and actually make us feel uh, relaxed, lack of pain. It's part of what's responsible for what they call runner's high. And these are the five amino acids, tyrosine, glycine, glycine, phenylalanine, and then leucine. That's why this one's called Lou encephalin. If the last amino acid here is metathionine instead, then it would be met encephalin. Okay, so this is supposed to be amino acids linked together, so we should find amide bonds. See, double bond O, single bond N. Can you find them? There they are. See, double bond O, N, adjoining. See, double bond O, N, this is where they joined. See, double bond O, N, this is where they joined. See, double bond O, N, this is where they joined. It took four amide linkages to hold one, two, three, four, five amino acid pieces together. So there still should be an amino terminal or an amino end, and there it is. And then there still should be a carboxylic acid end. On the far right usually is where it's shown, and there's our carboxylic acid. So we know we're looking at a peptide because it has the residues from amino acids and a peptide or amide linkages holding it together. Well, what's a protein? It's just a giant version of what we just looked at. So somewhere deep in all of this structure are a huge number of amide bonds. Fatty acids are another biological molecule that has a recognizable functional group. These are long-chain carboxylic acids, although recently I've seen in the literature people are starting to talk about short-chain fatty acids, so that's an interesting use of the word. Here's a carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid. These are generally hydrocarbon chains of some length with a carboxylic acid on one end. If the hydrocarbon chain has all single bonds, it's called a saturated fatty acid. If it has one or so double bonds, it's an unsaturated fatty acid. And if it has multiple double bonds throughout the chain, then it's called a polyunsaturated fatty acid. These are the same words that you hear used nutritionally. Saturated fats and unsaturated fats are made of these various fatty acids. Arachidonic acid is an important carboxylic acid. It's part of the mechanism by which your body makes prostaglandins, good, useful prostaglandins, and even the ones that eventually cause, cause inflammatory pain. Carboxylic acid, it happens to be a polyunsaturated carboxylic acid, specifically with four double bonds, and each of those double bonds is in a specific geometry that happens to be called cis. So this molecule curls up on itself, and toward the end of the course, we'll take another look at this, because this actually is the molecule that fits into enzymes that make prostaglandins, and this is the molecule that all of the NSAIDs are trying to mimic so that they can fit in that enzyme and either shut it down or change its action. So fats and oils are made out of those fatty acids. Here's a part that used to be a fatty acid, 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 and used to be a fatty acid. These look kind of connected here. That's actually a C double bond O and a C double bond O. So what's a fat or an oil? It's simply a triester. In other words, it has three esters made out of the alcohol glycerol. Glycerol comes along with three alcohol groups, so it can bond with three fatty acids to make an ester in three places. So stare at the structure of this one for a little bit and see if you can find the esters. Remember that an ester is C double bond O, and then that same C has a single bond O, and on the far side of that single bond O, instead of an H, is carbon. So we know we're going to concentrate our efforts here, and let me just show it to you. So here's C double bond O, O carbon. C double bond O, O carbon. C double bond O, O carbon. So there's the three esters, or the triester. This one has it too. Just a little harder to see because that double bond didn't come out very well. C double bond O, O, C. C double bond O, O, C. C double bond O, O, C. One other thing you might notice about these is the chains of the fatty acids here. On this one, they're all saturated, no double bond. So this is called a saturated fat, and it'll be a solid at room temperature. The chains of the fatty acids here have a lot of double bonds in them. This one's saturated, but mostly they have double bonds. This is called an unsaturated fat, or otherwise usually called an oil, 
This will actually be a liquid at room temperature. Having double bonds here changes the way these can pack together, and this actually has a lower melting point than that does. Fat and an oil, but they're commonly connected because they are both triesters of the alcohol glycerol. So remember, you want to learn to focus on the functional groups. The functional group gives the name and the family to the molecule, and it has a specific associated structural cluster. You need to look for them in a molecule, and when we do a few reactions of organic compounds, that's where the reactions take place.